So we're looking at, I don't know if revolutionize is the right word, but we're trying to change the tart cherry system. And the main goal there is try to get growers to get returns sooner. So very similar to what we've done, that transition in apples to high density, where we can start harvesting in the second and third years, we're trying to do that in cherries. But right now our tart cherries are planted and we keep the fruit off them until probably years five, six, or seven, and then we actually have to have them big enough to shake. So we shake the cherries and we are thinking about more of a hedgerow, smaller trees with a continuously moving harvester that doesn't actually shake the trunk, but maybe knocks the cherries off the tree. So we have three plantings right now dedicated to that orchard of the future. Uh, we have a really nice new planting of high density sweet cherries. So if growers are interested in fresh market sweet cherries, so that's pretty neat and it's got those crazy names like the UFO and the KGB and so those systems from all over the world. So that uh, looks great uh, this year. And then the two plantings I'll show the folks today are one is the NC140 trial. So it's an apple rootstock trial. So that's pretty unique. Um, we have one that's similar uh, at the Clarksville station with a couple of different rootstocks here in Northwest Michigan. And what the concentration is, um, our growers, I mean, our area is really sandy. So we have very sandy soils, which is very different from the ridge. So we're looking at how these root stocks perform in lighter soils. And then the other trial that we are uh, established last year is a high density honey crisp on NIC 29, which is a dwarfing root stock. And we're really interested in irrigating and fertigating properly. And so a lot of the data that's been developed in Michigan for high density apples has really been done on the ridge or at Clarksville, where most of our apples are grown. And as I see more of our growers transition to these higher density systems, how much water do we need and how much fertilizer do we need to put down on these lighter soils? So a lot of times those data don't extrapolate really well just because they grow on heavier soil down uh, in the Grand Rapids area and how we translate that water and fertilizer needs to an area with lighter soils. So I think our growers are very interested in that. And I think that water is, um, a lot of our growers haven't been irrigating our bigger standard trees and so how they irrigate and how the technologies change I think we're going to provide them some good data over the years.